Good evening, everyone. Hi, Easter greetings to all, and it's a real pleasure to be here. Before I begin, I would like to express my appreciation for Kitab Khana. It's always been extremely supportive of poets and poetry. I have been doing a poetry festival there for 100,000 Poets for Change since 2012, and they've always been wonderful. But this new initiative with Indian Novels Collective takes it to a whole new level at a time when community bonding is so essential. So thank you, Kitab Khana. Thank you, Ashwini. And if we were face to face now, I would tell you to applaud, but I guess you could do that virtually as well. So Easter is a time for resurrection. And while we are all going through a very hard time, certainly the earth seems to be resurrecting itself. Nature is reclaiming its own. And uh, I wrote this poem the other day, it's very new. The world is inside out. The nil guy at the mall chews plastic grass. In a garden that has never met the forests I have known. The sky hangs blue upon poisoned air and peacocks dance in the streets. I, nocturnal creature under my quiet rock, awoke from my burrow and sniffed the breeze today. My edge of the jungle had been a safe space, but something crackled like twigs beneath my toes. It was time to explore the world where they caged me once and sw slaughtered my friends. We brought disease, they said, but drank the luwak, flavored with our excrement. On the other side, it was quiet, and I found a zebra crossing. I followed it to the end of the street, where buildings stood like dying trees and not a sound was heard. I like it here, Nilgai. Let's dance with the peacocks on these streets where grass once grew. Let's enjoy this moment before the humans take it back. This is our time. Someone said to get closer to the mic, is that better? Yes, Ashwini? Okay. I will go on to another new poem, which is based on a Sindhi and Punjabi folk tale, a legend uh, of Sweeney and Meher. It's one of the popular tragic romances of Sindh and Punjab, where Sweeney is married to this man that she despises, and every night she swims across the river to meet her lover, Meher and uses an earthenware pot to keep her afloat. And one night, her uh, sister-in-law replaces the pot with a vessel of unbaked clay. And I've called it Sweeney Adrift, which is how I think some of us feel these days. Sweeney Adrift. What is this river that takes me along with the leaking pot against the setting sun? Shadows fall like lattice gates upon the face and a song streams softly in the dark, whispers in the wind. I have crossed these waters many times before, but tonight the fireflies, like false hopes in the sky, turn dusk to darkness with every flash, and my lover seems so far away on the other side. Tonight, the clay that these cold fingers cradle falls apart as though fire had never touched it. I, Sweeney, born in desert lands, I know the touch of sun and earth as it crumbles in my hand. This water, black as death, is seeping through. This broken pot bites my burning skin as crocodiles circle in the storm. Meher, I feel you like a folk tale in my bones. But where are you in these whirling waves as my world disintegrates? I will move on. I see Anjali Purohit has joined us, and I will move on to a request that she made, in fact. A couple of days ago, Anju Makija was on this platform. 
Sorry, there was some problem here. It, it told me there was someone else trying to log on. That's probably the next poet. Um, so, Anju, Makija and I, in, in 1998, we published a book of poems of Sindhi partition poetry in English translation. This was called Freedom in Fishers. It was published at a time that uh, no one was talking about the impact of partition. And I think today, as we hear about the migrant processions and the way that they're living in camps and suffering, I think it, it is relevant today as well. Anjali, so thank you for asking me to read this. this these were poems that uh, this poet, Dr. Arjun Shah, had in his personal collection. We were told that everything was lost at the time of the Mumbai floods. So we got them just in time. We were really fortunate. This is a poem by Parsram Zia. The curse of Pohu's mother. Congresswala's necks should be broken. Those men have done us injustice. Pounding the clothes on the river bank, Pohu's mother curses. They gifted sin to those jerts. Terrible conditions thrust upon us. Even Jinnah did not care. Pohu's mother curses. Stripped here, stripped there, the winds turned upon us. Sharing her woes with other women, Pohu's mother curses. Yari Peel will teach them a lesson. Lal Sain's stick will fall on their heads. Giving us a kilo of atto, they tossed us in the camps. Pohu's mother curses. Cut off from our land, thrown in this good-for-nothing place. Those ice-cold muas, no feeling in their bones. Pohu's mother curses. Mukhi's boss over us, full of themselves. The lazy lumps fill their stomachs, flatter one another all the time. Pohu's mother curses. Look at the rations those muas give us. Selling our ornaments, we make ends meet. Yet they say, such good care we take of you. Pohu's mother curses. Thobies used to wash our clothes. Here I beat heaps on the river bed. The clothes turn white, my mood turns black. Pohu's mother curses. Blowing, puffing, panting, I light the fire. The sticks are wetter than this muddy river. The smoke blinds, no peace of mind. Pohu's mother curses. Hearing Pohu's mother, watching her weep, even Sutai forgets to smoke. I'll move on to a few of my own poems now. Um, so we are all feeling locked in, we are all feeling cooped up, but what happens when you really need to get away from your space, from the space that you inhabit and the various people that you inhabit? So here's my poem, Bird Woman. On one of those days when the key refused to fit the padlock, I turned myself to air and squeezed through the keyhole. It was bright outside, and I was tired of all those jostling women. Nomad with her fraying suitcase, devil woman with her lacerated tail, and that sad little lady with her stained and grimy apron, who seemed so familiar, disintegrating in a thousand homes. All these women and a few more were crowding in, and the keyhole that sat on my shoulder was at cracking point. I knew I had somehow lost my way in the brightness outside after all these years in a dingy room. Stretching my legs was a strain, and breathing was a whole new experience. But folded up behind my back, I found some wings. They were slightly dirty, but once I got used to their rusty screech, I found, strangely enough, they worked. I'm making friends with the birds now, and have discovered my talons too, which sink perfectly into the eagle with his beady eyes. Breathing is still a problem sometimes, but the air is warm. And I have left those jostling women 
behind. I'll move on to a slightly older poem, again, when you're sitting alone and uh, things happen. There are always things that happen when you are in solitude. So Red Riding Wood. At this moment, there is nothing. The telephone sits waiting to be shattered. The wire hangs limply from the wall and the brick has come up again around her head. An aimless wanderer strolls down upon the cheek, stopping on its saline path, then moving on. Two bodies lie entwined upon the beach, like in a sea-grade Hindi film. At this moment, they are all remote, the sheep who bleat in the light till she loses count, the hare and tortoises who infuriate her world, and the rats scrambling up their ladders. She has shut the door upon them. She scratches the wood like some forgotten bitch. To kick a door is simple, to turn a latch is not. The paint flakes, but her soul is made of teeth. Once upon a time, there was him, strong as the forest, full of fireflies and mysterious silences. She set herself on fire, burned him down, then rose from the ashes, red riding wood, gave herself to every wolf in town. That old woman whose teeth are lying by the fireside, was she an ancestor? or simply an innocent locked in a time capsule. The canine at the doorstep says nothing. It is slunk into the woods. I'll move on to a more recent poem now. It's from my book, Frizzle, uh, which is a collection of poems written from 1980 to 2017. I didn't call it collected poems in the hope that I would write a few more. And, uh, Here's, here's kites. Kites are flimsy, fragile, decorative, paper thin, bearing their wooden cross, biding their time in airless drawers hidden away from the sky. Kites are nasty, like women. Sharp-edged, they fly against the clouds, bite into your hand. The threads they bear have hidden shards of glass unfurling as the gauge the weft of wind. You who stand on the parapet edge, believing you hold the strings, look up where it hovers and rustles. Kites are nasty. They soar, they tug against the reins, catch the nearest squall and disappear. You will only be left with a stinging hand and an empty space above. So some of us, in fact most of us, have been spending time in our kitchens, but women do that most of the time anyway. And uh, one day I found myself speaking to the milk pot. So here's the woman who speaks to milk pots. Boil! I shall ignore that steely glint and watch you. I am simmering too, padding about with cotton ball claws, arching behind my back. Sorry, arching my back before the flickering flames, scratching behind my ear. You've got the cream melded into every drop. I will bide my time till you separate and strain you through fire mesh. I'm on edge now, about to overflow. Don't sit so self-contained, snow white and cold. I shall turn the heat up, put the lid on, watch me. And here, since we are on the subject of milk, here's tea party. When you and I were about to break, there was no question of a fight over who would take the cups and who the saucers. You spilled over with steam, Meniscus rippling with the slightest touch. I, 
supine on the floor, licked the milk once meant for you. Both of us were China at that point. One of us had been to China too, known the meaning of porcelain freedoms, sniffed red cards. One of us had known the sound of an alien tongue, harsh and guttural as it came from smiling mouths. Our smiles were circular, yours and mine, yours from the top of the tea and mine below, two hearts joined together on separate rims. When we blew at each other, the crockery stayed firm. But who but you and I would know the liquid moved. No, there was no fight over chipped white glass. The pieces lay upon the kitchen floor. And I, I've moved to tea parties in other living rooms, balancing alien porcelain on a frigid farm. I think I'm almost out of time, so I'll just end with one last poem as Ms. Hosefa is waiting. Uh, it's called Wings, and uh, it's when I was looking for a sense of peace that I wrote this. Wings. Tonight, I shall fold myself up, create an origami pattern that morphs into bird or flower, white print delicate, forgetting the many stages of tree and wood, bark and axe, pulverizing up of pulp the mush that led to this final stage on which the world imprints itself. Tonight I shall soar on paper wings, color my bit of sky. Thank you very much. I see Ashwin's asked for one more. Is that uh, after this poem or was that before? Ashwini? Ashwini, should I read one more or are we done? Okay, he's not answering, so... Shall I continue, Ashwini? Okay, one last. Okay, then I must read this one. Uh, it's a new poem, I've never read it before. Not very new, I wrote it two years ago, but then that's new in my definition. Uh, we've got a very new, with a very different uh, definition of mass right now. But here's a poem that I wrote at a poem about mass, at a workshop about mass. This was at the Pondicherry Poetry Festival. And a poet called Joan Dobby conducted this workshop where all of us were given masks and asked to decorate them and write poems about them. Like children, we just went about it. And I looked at everyone's beautiful creations and um, I had to call mine, of course, nothing artistic about you. So here it is. First time I'm reading it ever. You're too big for my face. You with the bloody smile and empty eyes your bit of soul carved out in glitter between the eyebrows. I tried to cover your nostrils with beads and baubles, block out the acrid smells and failed. The glue just wasn't strong enough for me. So I take you in, world, despite the plastic on my cheeks and savor the grass that dangles from the ears. Sometimes from these blanked out eyes, the tears come in shiny red. And when they fall too far, I can lick them with the snake that waits behind these bleeding lips. My thirst is quenched for now. But if I'm not careful, I might, I might just slide out and let you fall. You should have had the sense to be the right fit for my face. But I should have known better, too. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. It's been lovely being here. And I'm really looking forward now to Josefa Pandit. See you then.